In an obscure village in India, Santanu was dying. The doctors refused to tell my son he was going to die. I couldn't tell him either. Most of the people in this area live by doing daily uh, labor. So they go to the field, they earn daily wages, some amount of rupees, so that they uh, live with that money. So that's how they feed their children, feed themselves. Some places there is no electricity. So the living conditions of this area is very poor. And the children, many of the children are not in the schools because the families are not able to support them. Though it is uh, just uh, around two hours from the city, when you come here, it is altogether a different scenario. Even with so little going for them in this area, Santanu's parents managed to get him to a doctor in the city, only to have their fears confirmed. A CT scan showed that their son had a brain tumor. All hope abandoned them. I didn't want to live anymore. I just wanted to be gone. What else could she do? Santanu was only 12 years old, and the past three years had been spent in pain. His parents had done everything they could, only to be forsaken by hope. Santanu couldn't stand anymore. He could only lie down. Eventually, we had to turn him from side to side as he slept. He wouldn't eat any food. He would only take a little water. But what Santanu's mother didn't realize was that hope was not gone. It was in the next village over. A bridge of Hope Center had been established. Schooling for these children had never been a realistic option before, but because of God's compassion, that changed. For the first time in their lives, they had a school in their own village, provided by people who loved them. Yet it wasn't just an education. Children were changing. Behavior improved. Happiness increased. They learned that Jesus, who loves them enough to die for them, listens to their prayers. So the children place complete trust in Jesus. Once the staff is appointed, we give them proper training how to uh, teach these uh, children. And uh, we always tell that uh, you are the model. No? The students are going to look up uh, to you. Each day we gather children into prayer groups so they can pray for each other. Children often return the very next day saying, Yesterday the group prayed for me and God answered their prayer. That problem is solved. A real God whom they had never heard of before was solving real problems. Prayer and worship opened up a whole new world of hope. We also teach them from the Bible every day and they find it so compelling that they go home and read it with their families as well. And what were the parents saying about the changes they saw in their children? His behavior and attitudes have changed, and our village is even changing because of him. Even though we are poor and life is hard, we don't care about any of that when we see what has become of our son. Sagan saw the power of prayer demonstrated through the example of the staff. He saw that they prayed for everything. So he and the children started doing the same thing on their own. My friends and I started praying together because I believe in Jesus and I believe he can heal. Sagan and his friends began to pray for the sick and those in need. And God answered with power. Yes. 
When we heard that Santanuk was sick, I told them, one of your friends is very sick, so if you would please go and pray for him. The prayer group had grown by this time. They gathered together at the project center and prayerfully prepared to go intercede for Santanu at his home. Bridge of Hope staff joined the children for their journey to Santanu's home, quite a distance away. We went to Santanu's house and we prayed there. At that time, he was very, very sick. In Calcutta, they had found a brain tumor. He was not able to do anything. He could not walk or even get up. Naturally, all had hoped for an immediate healing, but only a little relief was given. But this group had the undaunted faith of children. Sagan and his friends returned daily to persevere in prayer. And on the fifth day, God answered. Santanu is one of our friends. He is not from the project center, but he had a brain tumor. And when we heard this, we went to his home and prayed, and God miraculously healed him. The prayer group used to come and pray for me, and after that, there was no more pain. When we went to the hospital, the doctors did a new CT scan and told us there's no longer a problem. Remarkable as this story is, God was just getting started. Word of Santanu's miraculous healing swept quickly across that village. After that miracle, many other people asked us to pray for the sick, and they are also getting healed. News of this God who heals brought hope to others struggling with tragedy and sickness. Sagan. Sagan's group became a bridge to that hope. Since Santanu was healed, people from across this village and the surrounding area began asking for prayer. This was no longer a children's affair, but a mighty work of God among hurting and unnoticed people. Many people are asking for prayer. We also go to people's homes and pray, and those people are getting healed too. Recently, my grandfather was suffering from severe stomach pains. So he said, Sagan, you know how to pray. Would you please pray for me? 
And when I prayed for him, he was healed and saw the power of God. But those who come depart with more than a healing. They return with a testimony of new life. I'm amazed. These small children, you know, they have the privilege of making this group. They are not, uh, I mean, too young or they are not uh, 15 or 16, 17 teenagers. They are just young people and they could get this message. Even with a new awareness of the power of Jesus in this village, God was not finished. God often multiplies what children offer Him. It's incredible how this thing has spread. Children come to the center from several other villages. And now, in all of those areas, children have followed Sagan's example and started prayer teams that are just as powerful. How frequently? They all gather every day, reading the scriptures and praying. God does hear those who labor in prayer for those on the other side of the world. He responds by creating reasons for people to pray for specific unheard of villages like this one. In this case, sponsored children were the reason to pray. This Bridge of Hope Center alone represents about 100 believers thousands of miles away praying for a village they know little about. Add to that the innocent prayers of the children themselves, and God eagerly responds with power. What amazes more, when we pray sometimes God doesn't answer, but then when these little children pray, most of the prayers have been answered and miracles happen. And I'm, I'm really happy, I'm really happy this is not doing that. And God is, I mean, all the glory goes to God. I, thank you. I would like to thank all of the children's sponsors for their loving help. The children are also praying for you in return. I'm so happy that the Buddha of has been established in this place. Now, I'm sure otherwise they would have never formed this group. They would have never come to know the Lord. Thank you, sir. Stories of supported children are often about the rescuing of a child. This one is about the children who are doing the rescuing. God's love has, in fact, overflowed into surrounding villages, leaving testimonies of healing in its wake. And all of this because of a child and a Bridge of Hope Center. But the truly amazing thing is, until just a few months before this, these children had never heard the name of Jesus. What an incredible difference Jesus has made in their lives.